the Mikoshi clan, a prominent Inazuman family that served the Raiden Shogun 500 years ago. They were celebrated for their fierce warriors and loyalty to the Electro Archon. Things changed, however, when the Cataclysm arrived in the shores of Inazuma. Beasts from beyond the world had risen. Beasts from the Abyss. Monsters never before seen. The Raiden Shogun stood against the hordes, alongside her warriors and the Mikoshi clan, to stem the tide of the Abyss. For this video, we are going to talk about the Mikoshi clan and their successor clan, the Iwakura as well as some tidbit information from the cataclysm that happened 500 years ago and how it affected Inazuma. Chiyo, the warrior oni of the Mikoshi clan. Chiyo was a warrior oni and the leader of the Mikoshi clan. She stood against the darkness with the emblem of the Raiden Shogun on her back. The oni were known for their ferocity in battle as well as their heightened endurance. They were demi-humans with large bodies and horns. Fierce as she may have been, the battle with the monsters were unlike any other. During the battle, she was swallowed by a creature that had a tiger's body and a serpent's tail, possibly a corrupted Nue. She tore through the creature's innards from within and broke free with the ferocity of the Oni. However, the corruption of the Abyss had already taken hold of her. Corruption spread through her body. She witnessed her comrades ripped to shreds, the land steeped in darkness as far as the eye could see. Hatred coursed through her, hatred for the gods. She stumbled into her allies' camp and drew her prized blade from its sheath, a blade gifted to her by Narukami Ogosho for her service and her strength. She drew the blade against the object of her hatred, the almighty Raiden Shogun. While a great warrior and a fierce oni, she was no match against a god, and quickly lost. But a lethal blow was not immediately struck. Her sword arm and one horn would be cut from her body. Perhaps a mercy from the Raiden Shogun, or regret. She immediately fled into the forest, and there she met her fate. This was seen as a betrayal from the Mikoshi clan, and their reputation was dragged through the mud. They lost their status and their honor. Two sons remained from the Mikoshi clan. Mikoshi Doke, the biological son of Chiyo, and Mikoshi Nagamasa, the adopted son of Chiyo. Doke disappeared from the Mikoshi family, while Nagamasa joined the shogunate to attempt to clear his family's name. Mikoshi Doke fled from his family's predicament and had hid secluded in Konda village. There he met Teruyo of Noyogo Tengu. Teruyo took a liking to the Oni and felt sympathy for his plight. She asked him of his past and sneered disdainfully upon listening to it. She offered him a new name in order to help him forget about his past. He agreed. Teruyo said these words to him. Well, you shall be called Iwakura, the seat of rock a name that human words cannot harm. Come on, mortal in whose veins run the blood of the Oni, be glad. Smile a little. You should know names given by us Yogo Tengu are blessed with divine powers. Besides, the name Rock suits you. It certainly suits your mind and your muscles, that's for sure. Well then, when the cherry blossoms fall next year, let's have a duel here, Iwakura. Child of the Oni, hone your swordsmanship and become a foe whom the Yogo Tengu would not be ashamed to cross swords with. Ah yes, if you manage to touch me, you'll get to call your secret blade Tengu Victor. After all, if you get that point, you'll have a sword that'll let you triumph over the Tengu. Iwakura Doke would hone his swordsmanship for 13 years while having duels with Teruyo after which he would be able to accomplish the impossible. He developed a sword technique so fast that it is able to graze a Tengu, earning his swordsmanship the title of Tengu Victor, as promised by Teruyo, and his secret technique known as Tengu Sweeper. With his skills honed enough and now able to make a name for himself, Teruyo bid him farewell 
as she still needs to fulfill her duties as a Tengu. They never saw each other again. Many years have passed and Iwakura Doke, now with his secret sword technique, Tengu Sweeper, became the Kojo clan swordsmanship instructor. He received the title of Doin and founded the Iwakura Art Sword Dojo to rising success. Even after his passing, his dojo lives on. However, today, with the Vision Hunt Decree, the Iwakura Art Dojo is split as many of the instructors join the Shogun's army, despite losing their vision to them. And many of the students turned against the Shogunate to become mercenaries. The current leader of the Iwakura clan is Iwakura Kozu. As for the Mikoshi clan, their name has actually long been redeemed. The hard work of Mikoshi Nagamasa within the Shogunate put the Mikoshi name back on track, and his family's reputation was redeemed with diligence and righteousness. And the current head of the Mikoshi clan is Mikoshi Genjiro, who serves the same position as Mikoshi Nagamasa, as one of the people that oversees the Tatarasuna Forge. The story between the Iwakura clan and the Mikoshi clan are pretty interesting, especially since it does cover a little bit of the Cataclysm, which we actually... This would be the first time we ever heard of the Cataclysm in Inazuma. And it seems like they were also at war with the Abyss during the time. And it was specifically mentioned that they were fighting the Abyss itself. And it was interesting to know that they do really have the ability to corrupt. The Abyss corrupted the non-humans as it was mentioned in the Sundered Feather in the Severed Fate artifact that the non-humans have lost a lot of uh, their numbers. Uh, specifically, it was mentioned that with that war, non-human blood grows thinner and thinner. It means that the Abyss corrupted the non-humans. Could it be that non-humans are easier to corrupt than humans are with the Abyss? Because we know that most of the forces that the Abyss uses against us are also non-human. Not only that, but even in Mondstadt, they chose to corrupt non-humans as well. Because in Mondstadt, they corrupted Dovalin and even tried to corrupt Boreas with, uh, with the Abyss Herald. We do know they have corrupted humans before, like Gold, uh, our sibling, the Bloodstained Knight. So it is possible to corrupt humans. But maybe if you're close to a god or you believe in one of the Archons, you have this stronger resistance to being corrupted. There is also this running uh, thing where Paimon calls herself a god of protection. Maybe that is why the Abyss can't easily corrupt the Traveler, because Paimon is with us. But that's my thoughts on this whole thing. What do you guys think about the Iwakura clan and the Mikoshi clan and what we learned a little bit about the Abyss, as well as the general lore of Inazuma? I find Inazuma's lore so interesting as well as the different places like Tatarasuna. Let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Goodbye.